Welcome, I'm Tracy Smith and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. Multi-billionaire Mark Cuban has been a businessman since he was just a kid. He told correspondent Jim Axelrod how he got started. At the age of 64, Mark Cuban's been focused on the next dollar for close to 50 years since he was a kid in Pittsburgh. Selling garbage bags door to door, selling magazines, selling candy door to door. You did all that? All that. Hi, my name is Mark. Do you use garbage bags? If you just call me every time you need garbage bags, they're only $6 per hundred. I'll come and I'll just drop them off at the house. Once you're a salesperson and you know how to sell, there's nothing you can't do. Later in the show, Cuban on how curiosity put him on the path to success. Was your vision sort of something that was God given or did you work at refining your sense of the worlds that interested you to the point where you knew a little bit more, a step ahead of everybody else? I was just obscenely curious about everything. Going to my grandparents' house, there's no drawer I wouldn't open to see what was behind there. You know, I wanted to read the encyclopedia, <laughs> you know, just to see what I could learn. And ever wonder where holidays like National Taco Day or National Talk Like a Pirate Day come from? Turns out they're the work of one North Dakota calendar company. So what is a really big day? National Pizza Day. Pizza Day. Hot Dog Day. Beer Day. This day is already in existence. Amy and Doug are part of the team at National Day who vote on what does and doesn't get a spot on the calendar. Being a speed reader. I'm sensing a theme here. A lot of it is food related. We have a lot of food days. Donut day. Are people just looking for an excuse to eat a donut? I think people are looking for an excuse just to have some fun. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. Entrepreneur Mark Cuban has been hustling for nearly 50 years, but as he told Jim Axelrod, what matters most to him now is making an impact, not money. Is it impossible to stay connected to what most people would think of as a normal life? Yes and no. I mean, Always looking to unlock hidden value. It's not like my friends are rich, they're not. Multi-billionaire Mark Cuban. At the same time, if you're jumping on a plane, and it's your plane. Apparently finds none in either shy or retiring. The owner of the NBA's Dallas Mavericks, whose unrestrained dress downs of league refs have cost him millions in fines. Obviously, I'm incredibly impressed. A panelist on Shark Tank for the last 13 years. Rule number one, I'll teach you. Don't over negotiate. 550 for 11%. Done. Done. You got a deal. $5 million to build his factory. The kind of guy who loved playing himself on HBO's Entourage. You know what's going to happen? Mark's going to make Gordon Gecko look like Mary Poppins. I will never forget this. Cuban. Neither will I, Turtle. Is one high functioning multitasker. <laughs> but these days, if you want to know what's grabbing his attention, as big a potential disruptor as this space has seen. That's the goal. Check out his venture, Mark Cuban's Cost Plus Drugs, that aims to change the way we fill our prescriptions. How much of your head is Cost Plus eating up right now? About 99.99%. Financial, emotional, intellectual, all that bandwidth is going to Cost Plus. Prescription drugs are a half a trillion dollar market in the U.S. Cuban wants more transparency into how prices are set, an opaque and complicated process, he says, that's largely controlled by middlemen. Cost Plus deals directly with manufacturers and consumers, offering more profits for those who make drugs and lower prices for those who take them. Let me make sure I understand this. Uh -huh. Cost? You see it. Plus 15% for yep. you, plus $3 pharmacy fee because the pharmacist needs to get paid, and then $5 shipping if it's mail order. Simple. Simple. Cost Plus Drugs offers 1,100 medications right now, mostly, but not all generics, like atorvastatin, the generic of the cholesterol drug Lipitor. Retail, 5508 for 30 pills. Cost Plus, $3.60 for the same amount. 
when I was in my 20s and my 30s and my early 40s, it was all about how much money could I make. But at this point in my life where the next dollar that I bring in isn't gonna change my life, my kids' life, their kids' lives, the capitalistic reward comes from having an impact. At the age of 64, Mark Cuban's been focused on the next dollar for close to 50 years, since he was a kid in Pittsburgh. Selling garbage bags door to door, selling magazines, selling candy door to door. You did all that? All that. Hi, my name is Mark. Do you use garbage bags? If you just call me every time you need garbage bags, they're only $6 per 100. I'll come and I'll just drop them off at the house. Once you're a salesperson and you know how to sell, there's nothing you can't do. That salesmanship developed alongside a certain toughness in his working class Jewish home. The first time I ever got into a fight, some kid walked up and just punched me and started calling me a kike. And of course, I had to beat the hell out of him. But I go into my dad and saying, what's a kike? Every generation has a reason to have fear, but every generation has a reason to have hope. He took those qualities with him to Indiana University, along with a penchant for risk taking and thinking outside the box. Did you buy a bar before you were old enough to drink? Yes, Motley's Pub. And that was the first time I had to try to get things organized and actually run a real business. And I realized I wasn't that good at it. There were a lot of mistakes that I made. After graduation, he worked at a bank. That lasted nine months. Cuban had too many other things to try. Watch your hand. One last push here. Like acting, grabbing parts in a bunch of B movies. Who's Rachel? His first big money came at the age of 30, selling a software company he built called Microsolutions. While still not ready to settle down, I netted about $2 million after taxes. I bought a lifetime pass on American Airlines, and I'm not going to work. I'm just going to party like a rock star in as many countries as I can. His ever-churning mind was focused on and investing in the emerging sector of technology and computers. My net worth just kept on going bam, 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 along with that. By the time I'm um, 35, I was worth, you know, $15, 20000000 million. Life was good. Millions became billions when he and his college buddy, Todd Wagner, also now living in Dallas, wanted to listen to Indiana University basketball games on their old campus 900 miles away. So I go buy a computer, upgrade my phone line, downloaded Netscape software for a server, and started looking at different alternatives to try to put audio and eventually video on the internet. Nobody was doing it at the time. We were the first. I feel like I'm listening to the origin story of streaming. It is the origin story of streaming. There was nobody doing it, nobody. People thought I was an idiot. He wasn't. You sell to Yahoo? Sell to Yahoo for $5.7 billion in stock. It was the craziest thing ever. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I could be worth a billion. I was ready to retire when I had two million, <laughs> you know? If you were worth a tenth of what you're yeah. worth, you would be just as happy. Yeah, of course. One percent of what you're worth. Yes. If I had my same family and everything, for sure. And the people who say that's easy for him to say? Yeah, of course. But if you talk to my friends from back then who are still my friends, they'll tell you I've got stuff but hopefully I haven't changed all that much. We took him up on his idea to talk to his oldest pals. The big man, Bofi, Todapro, and Stu. Getting them together at a lunch spot in Pittsburgh. He said, if you ask the guys I grew up with, I am the same guy. Different stuff, same guy. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. A little more full of it, but not, not that much more full of it. But still the same guy, but a little bit. Same guy, meaning what the world sees of Mark Cuban now, they saw first, then. We got into stamps. I'd like to collect stamps, and Mark expressed an interest in stamps with the stamp show. We need to go in with $20. I come out with some stamps. Mark would come out with $100. <laughs> that, I mean, that, it's amazing. It's like, how did you do that? Inefficient markets. You look for inefficient markets. Yeah. He's buy on the second floor and sell them on the first floor, right? Basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Which is how he got to shooting baskets. That's all we need. We're done. <laughs> on a full court in the backyard of his $20 million plus mansion. It's two for two for anybody scoring at home. Yeah, we'll stop right there. Where he lives with his wife and three kids. My son gives me a hard time if I'm missing. I'm like, come on, Mark. A guy who's been draining him from deep for decades now. What did you know about running a professional sports team when you bought the Mavs? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The Dallas Mavericks he paid $285 million for 23 years ago are now estimated to be worth more than $3 billion. But remember, 
This is a guy looking for hidden value. The connection to your customer is stronger than anywhere else. You don't get requests from Make-A-Wish to sit down with a software programmer. A man who understands the role of good fortune in creating his great one. Do you walk around every day feeling like, man, did I get a good deal of the cards? Yeah. How does this happen to me? How do you explain it? I can't. Life is half random. There's half you have some level of control over and half it is what it is. If I was born five years sooner, not during you know the early days of the internet, you might not know my name. And I'm gonna never take it for granted and enjoy every stinking moment of it. Stick around for exclusive excerpts from their conversation that you can only see right here on CBS News Streaming. Up next, every day's a holiday. They may not be officially recognized, but for the team behind the National Day calendar, holidays like National French Fry Day are still worth a celebration. Luke Burbank has the story. As we launch into a new year, some clarification might be in order. National Lima Bean Respect Day, which falls on April 20th, is not actually a national holiday. Neither is National Talk in an Elevator Day, July 28th, or even the much beloved National Taco Day, October 4th. What these so-called national days are, really, are largely the invention of this guy. I've always had a love of celebration and I was digging around about where National Popcorn Day came from and couldn't find any real information. Yes, Marlo Anderson of Mandan, North Dakota, was curious one day about the origins of National Popcorn Day, January 19th. So he started keeping a blog called the National Day Calendar, which these days has grown into the sort of official decider of those often weird days you see people celebrating on Facebook or hear them talking about on morning TV. No, it's National Oatmeal Day! I love it. It is National Dog Day today. Today is National Receptionist Day. You know, the first month there was like a thousand people that came to the website. Six months we had a million people in the month come to the website and I'm like, this is really interesting. Working from this small building in Mandan, Anderson had been running a video conversion and computer repair business, but then the calendar took off. We actually had a meeting about two years after starting this about whether it should go away or continue on because it was stressing the company. We were really starting to get stressed here because of the hundreds of phone calls, thousands of emails, for something we're not getting paid for. Anderson decided to go all in on the calendar. After all, National Have Fun at Work Day is January 28th, creating a system whereby people can suggest new national days online, which is where Amy Monette and Doug Phillip come in. So what is a really big day? National Pizza Day. Pizza Day. Hot Dog Day. Beer Day. This day is already in existence. Amy and Doug are part of the team at National Day who vote on what does and doesn't get a spot on the calendar. I'm sensing a theme here. A lot of it is food related. We have a lot of food days. Donut Day. Are people just looking for an excuse to eat a donut? I think people are looking that, for an excuse just to have some fun. I want to just also make sure I understand this. You don't have any governmental authority to do this. Absolutely not. <laughs> the government, of course, has the 11 actual national holidays we're all familiar with. Welcome, everybody. On the National Day calendar, oh, there, there are also holidays. sponsored days in which a company pays money to have a national day declared for its product, which makes business sense to someone like Kim Francis. Hi everybody, I'm Kim Francis. Spokesperson for the Checkers and Rallies chain of restaurants. Do you account for National French Fry Day and make sure that you have enough stuff, basically? We do, we do. You know, in an average year, we, we can sell us up to 135,000 pounds of French fries per restaurant. But National French Fry Day, we absolutely plan weeks in advance to make sure we have plenty of fries to satisfy the demand on National French Fry Day. That's how impactful it is. Checkers and rallies had actually driven their Fry Love Express to Mandan, North Dakota on this day to celebrate 
the amazing news. Oh. National French Friday was being moved from a Wednesday to a Friday, which was a total natural. Get it? Fry? Day? Locals lined up for the free food, but seemed largely unaware these national days were getting decided just down the block. Do you know that that's all getting picked here in Mandan? No, no. Yeah, like a block from here is the headquarters. Are you ever in a conversation with someone, or your friend or whatever, and they're like, hey, guess what? It's National Wine Day. Let's like have some wine. Yeah, yes. Or like yesterday was Grandparents' Day, and I was for sure going to post Happy Grandparents' Day to my mom and their grandparents, so yeah. Which seems to be why this National Day calendar thing has taken off. Because we can all use a reason to reach out to a sibling, April 10th, or eat a blueberry popsicle, September 2nd, or you know, step in a puddle and splash your friend day. When you begin to integrate into your reality that you're worth a billion dollars, what happens? Surreal. What's that process like? For me, anyways, it was surreal. More with Mark Cuban after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Here's more from Jim Axelrod's conversation with Mark Cuban. I was talking to somebody who knew you a gazillion years ago and said, Mark loves having vision, but what he likes even more is selling that vision. Yeah. It's Accurate? True. Yeah, it, 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 that's a great description. I hadn't really thought of that before. Um, yeah, it's fun. Steve Jobs said everything's a remix. And, you know, learning technology, learning an industry, is kind of like a ball of thread. It's hard when you first get started, but once you get some foundation, just, you know, putting more and more thread around, it just makes the ball of knowledge even bigger. And once I get there and think I can have an impact, that's when it's fun to sell. Again, like cost plus drugs or changing the Mavericks or you know, any industry, HDNet, whatever it was, um, just going out there and saying, look, here's my vision. Am I right or wrong? You know, is this going to work in, in the marketplace or not? And that's, that's exciting to me. That, that's a challenge. That's the competitive side of me who says, okay, let's go out there and compete. Was your vision sort of something that was God-given or did you work at refining your sense of the worlds that interested you to the point where you knew a little bit more, a step ahead of everybody else? I was just obscenely curious about everything. Going to my grandparents' house, there's no drawer I wouldn't open to see what was behind there. You know, I wanted to read the encyclopedia, <laughs> you know, just to see what I could learn. I've always had a really strong sense of curiosity to this day, and I just want to keep on learning. And I learned when I combined that knowledge with sales ability, anything is possible. Uh Knowledge, sales ability, there's one more piece of the puzzle, it seems to me, which is a bit of nerve, that a bit of ability to take risk and not be intimidated by what happens if I fail. Yeah. In other words, you had this knowledge, but unless, some people are curious, really curious, but they then don't apply that curiosity out in the world because they're scared. Yeah. So was that also something that just, I think it's the competitive side of me. I mean, I was never great at sports, but I was good enough to compete. And, um, you know, you walk onto a court and you play the game and, and you see what happens in business, the exact same thing. No politics, Mark Cuban never runs for president? Never, never. I can have more of an impact now. For all the reasons why I couldn't work at Mellon Bank and I fight the NBA officials, you know, could you imagine being in a, in a political environment where there's a very specific set of rules that you always have to follow? I mean, I think there's things I could do better, but every entrepreneur thinks that about politics, you know? Um, but yeah, you won't see me run. I think I have more, more of an impact with cost plus drugs, and if that blows up to where we think it can be, wherever I can extend that. I read a really interesting quote from you. If I can come up with solutions that people can truly get behind and truly solve problems, then it makes perfect sense for me to run. If it comes down to do I think I can win because I can convince more people to vote for me, then no, yeah. I won't run. Yeah, I mean, you actually could probably do the sale. Yeah, I could do the sale, but I just, you know, prior to cost plus drugs, maybe the calculus would have been different, but now I see the impact. What, what happens 
very few people will have this experience in their life. When you begin to integrate into your reality that you're worth a billion dollars, yeah. what happens? Surreal. What's that process like? For me, anyways, it was surreal. You know, to this minute, to this very second, it's surreal. It's not real life in, in so many respects. But at that time, it wasn't so much me. It wasn't like, the only thing I really wanted to go out and buy was an airplane because the point my dad always made to me was, you know, you can't get your time back. Today's the youngest you're ever going to be. You're, you got to live like it. And it won't resonate when you're 40. It'll resonate when you're 60 and 70. And, and it has. And buying an airplane so I could recapture time, that, that was my one guilty pleasure. Um, but everything else, I mean, look at me. <laughs> I'm Tracy Smith. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next time on Here Comes the Sun.